Can we play the gaming industry like pros? The video game market is booming worldwide, and LAC has the opportunity to become a major player in this industry. Its vibrant culture and talented developers, combined with the rise of mobile gaming and streaming platforms, are already giving gaming a boost. But to unlock its full potential, we need to expand high-speed internet access and improve cloud computing infrastructure. Let's take advantage of digital opportunities to expand globally. Of Altered Ventures US and Mexico. He is accompanied by the esteemed panelists. Please put your hands together as we welcome our moderator. And he is accompanied by the esteemed panelists. We have Martin Spinetto, founder and CEO, Widow Games Argentina, Fernando Contreras, is that Stange? Stange? Good. Co founder and head of studio, Gamaga Congregate Studio Chile. Juan de Urasa, CEO and founder, Posibilian Tech Paraguay, and we have Gaston Pendrandi, founder, Golden Dog Interactive Uruguay. So I'm going to hand it over to our very esteemed moderator, and again, this is Exporting Fun, the untapped potential of Latin America and Caribbean video game studios. Over to you. Thank you very much. Can you guys hear me okay here? Well, uh, as you were told, and thank you for the heads up there on the Spanish speaking, this panel is going to be delivered in, Sp in, 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 in Spanish. This, this panel is going to be delivered in Spanish with all my fellow game developers here. It is an honor to be here again. Uh, I have to say that this is my third uh, Otulac event, so I'm delighted to be here with you. Thank you, Esperanza, and all the team for the invitation. We are very, very happy to be here. I am a Mexican based in Silicon Valley since 14 years ago, and I've been working in video games for the last 25 years. For the last 25 years, I have seen the video game industry grow and growth uh, in a massive scale. And this event is about digital transformation, it's about digital services, it's about how to empower your different kind of businesses with disrupting technologies. I have to say first that the gaming industry has been disrupting the world since almost 40 years now. So if you're not yet taking seriously the gaming industry, let me give you very rapidly before we go and introduce my, my partners here in the panel, some very, very quick numbers that I want to share with you in a very, very fast way. I don't know if you know this, but the gaming industry is an industry that is current valued, this is 22 uh, numbers, 2022 numbers, in $200 billion. This is about 2.5 times the music and the film industry put together. Number two, it is expected, and these are numbers from the Price Waterhouse Coopers Global and Entertainment Media Outlook study. It is expected that the gaming industry is going to value about 321 billion by 2026. If you put the indirect services, outsourcing, and content, gaming content value to this number, by 2026, the number is going to be near 500 billion dollars. I don't know if you know this, but there are close to 3.2 billion gamers in the world. Almost 50% of the population on Earth is playing in some way a video game right now. The average age of the gamer, 39 years old, between 35 and 39 years old. Half of them are women. I don't know if you know this, but there are more women 18 years old and plus playing video games in comparison to boys or men's 18 years old and younger. So there are more adult women playing video games right now. I could continue with some numbers and statistics about why the video game industry is worth paying attention to, but I think that no one better than several of the best, and I'm not saying this because they are here, but uh, several of the best gaming developers that I have known in my 25-year 
old history in the video game industry, not only in Latin America, but in all the world. Uh, we're going to go very rapidly with a quick introduction, and we're going to start. You're going to see that this panel is a little bit unstructured. It is intended to. So we're going to switch to Spanish and start a conversation on several themes that I'm pretty sure are going to pique your interest. Okay? Bienvenidos, bienvenidas. Vamos a comenzar, mi querido Martín. Bueno, muchas gracias, Mario. Eh, un placer estar aquí. Como comentaba, mi nombre es Martín Espineto. Soy el fundador Martín, de, Spineto, de Widow Games, una desarrolladora de basada en Buenos Aires con oficinas también en Latinoamérica. Y también soy el fundador de hace un año y medio Game Evolution, que es una blockchain incubator. Which is an incubator for video games. So we have a vision to help uh, gaming enterprises all over the world to use the blockchain technology, and also we are playing with AI in our game, uh, video games as well. Fern, good afternoon to everybody. I'm Fernanda Contreras. I am co-founder of the Gamaga Enterprise in Chile and now proudly part of the inter international enterprise conjugy. Our philosophy is to develop games that should reach every single gamer in the world and also to be able to support the developers of these games to start in this market and for them to be able to have access to different platforms where they can Publish their games. We were one of the first enterprises creating industries in Chile. It is one of the great reasons for Pratt to feel proud of, especially because 15 years ago the industry in Chile was just starting, and today we have more than 75 uh, enterprises developing video games. Therefore, our trajectory, our history has to do a lot with how we develop other enterprises, and especially now in Jamaica for this industry to be able to grow here and to be able to offer this support for success. Juan, my name is Juan de Urraza. I am the CEO of Possibilian Tech. Uh, that was created eight years ago in Paraguay. I am the biggest enterprise. We have 60 persons working full time with us. It is a, 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 a new uh, enterprise that is starting in the last years, launching our, our own products. We moved, started in location, and then we moved into other line of services. And at present, we have created a hybrid model where we have 50% of our model working, more than 65 working in projects of outsourcing. Uh -huh. Trabajando por contratación para for clients in the United States and Asia and Europe and another part of the team is working in their own projects with investment that is being achieved. A thank you to what the, 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 the work for hiring has generated. So it doesn't depend on investment in order to be able to grow. And this is very important. And I guess it has, might, might have not been the fastest one in the world, but we are managing our finances. Good afternoon. My name is Gaston. I am from Golden Dog Interactive. And I wanted to say to you, first of all, thank you for being here, for inviting us personally as a developer. In my case, it's a woman army. It is important for all of us. It is quite important for all of us, for me, to be able to share that vision so you are here getting to know about our industry. To be able to look into it, it is a very young industry that really made a revolution with finances in the cinema industry being as young as it is and capturing the attention of persons from all ages. Therefore, it is important for you to be there and let us start. Uh -huh. I have to share a disclaimer that the investment that is uh, investing in emerging markets since 2016 in video games, VR, and other categories related. We are proud investors of Golden Dog Studios also that Gaston represents. So let us start then with the dialogue. I have asked questions addressed to each of you. Well thought, I hope that I don't find you 
catch you out of base, but the first one I want to share a common question. Just place it on the floor, and I think that we still have enough time to be able to address it in terms of what I want to explain. Latin American today, without any, it represents one of the areas of greatest growth in the world. From 2019 to 2020, the industry in the world has grown 23% thanks to COVID and the lockdown that the planet suffered. It was a very important uh, engine for the industry. Nonetheless, Latin America grew approximately 45%. The world has grown approximately in the last 10 years, 8, 9, 11%. And for an industry, if for any industry, is nonetheless pretty strong. But Latin America has grown 15, 11, 13%, which is considered to be far above what is happening in developed countries. We have an audience that definitely places its businesses in Latin America, what would you say, what is your opinion for persons that are listening to us and are watching? I have said because there are persons that are watching because they are offering streaming online. What would you say to the persons that are not paying attention to the video games regionally and worldwide from Latin America? It doesn't matter where they are in the trenches as an investor, as a provider of services, of software developer, of our fintech solutions. We have a whole bunch of people in different industries. Why do, we, do they need to pay attention to the video games in as much as big as it is? Less than two hours ago, I was attending a meeting looking at how we could generate impact in Jamaica for this industry to start growing. And one of the main messages that I could deliver was that innovate and to start the video games industry has a physical cost, but far less than the innovation in other industries. The reason is quite simple. You need a computer and you need access to internet. But nowadays, information is at the tip of the finger of anyone. And in as much as it's difficult to access for the first time, the community is so big that the impact is that developing, long-term developing, is three, four times the result expected. Therefore, Jamaica has a great opportunity to be able to innovate, to create video games that does not have to do only with video technology, but is also to create content for many persons worldwide. It is not only, it is not only present in education and investment, but it also represents the country of each country. Therefore, to have the opportunity to get to know this community that is supporting itself in innovating, in creating from zero, it, there is not, it doesn't draw that great cost that some persons believe is implied in creating video games. Start from zero is even simpler and far cheaper than what many other persons believe. I think that, that comment is really great and impacting. I think that culturally speaking, Latin America has been well positioned in world, worldwide in terms of creativity and artistic level. I have worked dramatic in I've been developing video games for 11 years and before he was working in marketing and communications. And the Latin American countries are well recognized when they used to go to the Cannes Festival, they will win festivals they are because they were able to present quite creative items. So it has to do a lot with that development, with our creative culture, that capability to adapt because we have lived in lots of situations, good and bad ones in Latin America. And, but we have also a cap capability to adapt, to adjust. And also the fact that in the world there is no entering bar or barrier to enter. Today we speak in Ecuador with children and say, what do I need to do to develop a video game? And really speaking, they can develop with, a, with an average a keyboard, average tape, uh, computer. You can acquire, you don't need to pay. You're going to pay only the commissions if you generate money. 
and the development softwares are free. So there is absolutely no excuse not to try and to try to express your creativity through video games. And I think that it is an, an amazing opportunity for Latin America. We are not enough to generate so many positions, job positions that the world is demanding. Education is going slower than what the industry is demanding. And there is where you have a great uh, lack of uh, levering between, or leverage between demand and offer. What would you say? You have been working in the industry for several years. What would you say to persons who are working in other industries? Why should you need to pay attention? First of all, I think that it is important to, 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 to we are mixing too much. That's one is the consumer of video games, and the other one is the producer of video games. So one of the ciphers is the consumption of video games that because in Latin America is growing. But what I think that as producers, many times, we produce not only for Latin America, for the whole world. Then, yes, it is a global market that is growing tremendously, that all ages, both sexes, everybody is consuming at present, where small studies can have great hits, where big studies can also have great hits where the return to, of the inversion is investment is risky because it is impossible to guarantee that a particular game uh, would be successful, even a sequel, a sequencing. But there are also many opportunities, and as Martin said, to create jobs. Lots of young persons who want to produce, create new things that do not want to be working in the traditional market. They don't want traditional jobs. I will say always in Paraguay, in programming, it is okay to work work in a bank at a telephone company, but uh, those are not as uh, engaging or entertaining, but if you would, but if you, uh, okay, you don't have where to work as an artist, as an illustrator, and if you are lucky on TV or at one canal one, but there are few places where that creativity can be expressed, and the video games definitely are a place for this. Therefore, there is a, a young a public that persons who want to work in this, nonetheless, whether they earn a lot or not, the new generations is not necessarily only dictated by how much you can, but they need to be doing something that they like. If they can be in something that they like, they are okay. And then we can grow. We can make this industry grow, especially if we can then export those services at competitive rates while we are learning because when we produce products for the outside, for external customers, we are also paying for, for the trade. There are, there's no place where you can study to learn how to develop a video game. So we have to train them from zero. That also demands some efforts, but there is a great potential. And as we see from the United States and Europe, they are purchasing several studies in Brazil, Argentina, and they have started purchasing all the medium-sized studios because there is a lack of workmanship and creativity that we can satisfy from Latin America. Therefore, this is important, very good. Gaston, along the same line, you mentioned something, and I think that it is important to reinforce or underscore this approach, its approximation to the entrepreneurship on, uh, aligned to the same thing. Like, como una, like one arm, man army. Remember that we are also streaming. There are also persons who are entrepreneurs and they are just raising their antennas. They are capturing the message. What recommendation will you share with them that a person who like you started and without having the Gaston studio is starting and is working with two, three persons as freelancers? How can you start in that sense? Well, first of all, something that was very important for me was to place the cards on the table. What do we really have? What the possibilities were or are? And what we want to achieve? Because as our colleagues have said, to create video games demands a lot of passion. It demands, it is not something that I do because I don't have. It is something that I do because it is flowing from inside. It's something that I really like. And it, it, it was really must make me feel crazy. It really captures my attention. So if you are starting and you have many ideas to share, the first thing for me is to have a good role model, to be able to say, 
a good roadmap, meaning you determine what am I going to do. First of all, as an investor, I am in Uruguay. I have this. It is really solid. The question here because we have the Uruguayan video games camera. He ident they identified investors for all the studios. And then thanks to that, I was able to meet Mario then. Then they have another level rule of these types with lots of presentations and speeches with people that know a lot. And then they have the booths where you can meet with the developers and you enjoy. And it is just that to create that culture. And it is something that has very nice, it's very nice in Uruguay, the experience, a lot of diversity to tell the stories. Here we have two very important spectrums of the opportunity that this industry offers in Latin America and at the, at the world level. On one side, we have Gaston who is starting, he's a starter. And that definitely, as it is stated, he has some very clear recommendations to anybody that would like to invest time, effort, and dedication in something that you like. But also we have all the sea wolves that in the case of Fernanda and her brother were just purchased by an, uh, an enterprise of the import, like, like Congregate. So tell us a little more about that experience because it is the other side where your study was purchased by a legendary developer of video games. So we can say that really speaking, the dream of every single developer is to have a successful game or to be purchased. Those are the two. And this is the, the, issue, the issue here. We are personally very happy for, uh, for, because we share the same philosophy. You don't need to make things complicated in order to be able to achieve success and to reach your customer and to offer them an experience of quality. We started in a very simple way in the living room of our parents, really in the room in my brother's bedroom. And that experience has taken us to, un to understand every single role that impacts a good product and game that reaches our users. A theme that not everybody sees and not everybody understands in the development of video games. It is one of the few industries where there is convergence with several other specializations in order to be able to create from music, design, development, programming, and many times psychology. This mentality of uni uniting the best efforts, the best, uh, the, the most knowledgeable persons in each uh, of these areas in order to develop a good product does not need, does not need to be complicated, it needs to be entertaining to develop uh, video games is to deliver entertainment, rejoicing, relaxing. Ironically, one of the great historic stories that we have is that when we started the first game, that one of the first games sold was precisely to congregate because of a small amount between 500 and 1,000 US dollars and all that was reinvested and they created another one and they reinvested again. Years passed and we developed more than 56 games. The study was a growing little by little and congregate then was forget. They forgot congregate. It was one of our first clients. We cannot forgive, forget them. But it was not only the pandemic when we reconnected and the passion, how we envisioned business, how we thought of the workers and of how to produce video games brought us together again. And then in one month, we are going to celebrate one year of the congregation. And I could not be happier. They have remained, retained the same values in the games. And, and I believe that is the dream of lots of developers, not only to be purchased, acquired, 
but also to share those values and to be able to work in a team, as a teamwork. So again, congratulations to you and to all the team of Gamaga that I keep them very close to my heart. Without any doubt, it is not a story yet. And here, it is also of the opportunity that we're making reference to. It is not a very familiar story in Latin America. Still, we have these small gems that are opening their way, that are creating their own ways. But like Juan said a few minutes ago, the offer for studies that are taking place at the international level and they are being seen and they are becoming a reality. Thank you to the offer, the service offer. I just work in uh, 11 years in electronic cars, five years from Latin America, and then with a global responsibility from Silicon Valley. And I can say that enterprises like Activision and Unicard and their times and the great giants, Japanese giants of the, and the United States of video games turn back to look at these emerging markets first and foremost looking for services. And I believe it is the case, as you said before, because the 40th of the 50% that you generate has to do with services, which is one of the receive with recipes of success in the region. Tell us a little how you have done well. Our story started with wanting to make sure that our uh, games as the Paraguayan dream, we started with location that was quite new at the time. Then we were able to create a second game that allowed us to win, and then we won in Singapore that allowed us to, to win several prizes. We went, we were spent some time in Finland. It gave us, provided us with a lot of success, but it did not generate money. So they did not recover. It was four years developing a free-to-play. I'm going to interrupt one minute. That is a familiar story in Latin America. Wow. Then after four years with this Paraguayan, which is almost a miracle to invest because there are not too many investors in this area with over $4 million invested, we realized it was not sustainable to continue like that. Everybody said, yes, we are quite happy with all what was achieved, but what do we do now? The answer, Gabriel said, let us continue, let us continue, but then because we became specialists in geolocalization and few enterprises knew and the ones who were good. That opened uh, several doors for us for study, for persons that needed developments in geolocation. And we started uh, offering services to, to sell digital services to the United States. It's almost impossible. But then if I have to demand, uh, then if I, if I give you my money, where can I find you? Those are concerns that some of the persons had. So it will be a contract of three months, and then they liked so much that we did. Then we got them three months more, and then six months more, and then the last one was one year, and then several millions of dollars. But we needed to demonstrate, we needed to prove ourselves that we were able to produce things of quality that were not going to disappear. So this opened the, the doors to us. Some developers in the United States uh, were really interested in our work and starting, uh, it was not necessarily the, 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 the working with the Paraguayan study. So they tried to continue developing our own games and they wanted to gain a stability. They did not want to have this frightening feeling in their mouth that say, oh God, if something goes bad tomorrow, what are we going to do? So it is important that we were receiving income, generating income on a regular basis. Now we have approximately 40 persons working and it allows us to have two parallel teams producing our own. The day that we hit it, we said, well, we cannot do it, it is too hard. And if, for example, if we don't reach to the point that they, it is needed, 
Well, we need to be very careful with the analysis because we need to decide on what we're going to do based on the what is on fashion, what is needed, and then we cannot take risk and we cannot be doing things that are very costly, costly effective because although we do not get the expected results, well, it is it's a problem. So what we did was that what we are uh, in this new this new uh, trend, we learned new technologies, and then now we are we are uh, hired for these new uh, trends and new technologies that new uh, um, players are coming into place, and they are asking for. And everything is with the three D. Uh, technology. Uh, so, Martin, you are experiencing and you're doing some experiment on how to uh, to do um, the three D, the three D, and uh, localization. Web three uh, always calls the attention uh, because we are still finishing the winter. A crypto. Um, some people learned about the 3, 3 gig, uh, but I'm always saying if you want to know about the metaverse, you need to look at what is happening with the video games, and then you will know what it is metaverse. But tell us what you're doing with Web3, and why it is important not to not to archive it and forget it. Um, well, I think that uh, what we're seeing today is that uh, is what was seen with the this option with internet. There is a big boom concerning the use of this hype in the technology, uh, where people are trying to sell different products, and then we're going to see some uh, uh, different offers. And, but we don't have too much demand, so they are not using it a lot. So we're going to see some. Uh, we're going to see some games in which some uh, uh, enterprises just having a check, and it's really not producing much. And net, whatever they are producing, although there is a hype, is not used. So what we are trying is to offer a product that has a quality. And what we are looking at is that we have um, an invoice of $3 million. And, and of course, later on, we, we began asking ourselves, what are we going to do with this? We were trying to uh, have, a med uh, have a medication for, for no sickness. So we had a problem, and we now realize that games were not well implemented. And although there were a lot of people trying to, it was we would have a lot of games in the in the in the market. It was not really having its, its commitment. People were not using what we were producing, and what we see today is that some. Uh, enterprises that really know how to do the games and how to uh, implement different technologies. Uh, we, we noticed that uh, these industries and, the, and these, uh, these uh, enterprises are really uh, getting the getting there where the the demand is and. We are going to see the difference between the financial speculation and we're going to be seeing the, the usability of whatever we are producing. And we're going to see that we're looking at Metaverso. Metaverso is being, it was um, created long ago. And we need to be careful on how we are, there, there are some bubbles that people think that it is it's a, there is a game that is being used, and in the reality is that it is not. So, if we look at, if we look at when something is very popular, you're going to see that it just passes, and people don't remember about it. Um, well, when we look at, uh, for example, there was an example of a Czech um, a, 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 a industry where they have a hype in one of the 
products that they were uh, offering. And they told us that they are not using a marketplace crypto. They are, they are not trying to use a, a, a game that is for financial uh, uh, results. We are trying to in, um, we are trying to implement um, an experience. We are trying to use. It's, it's not a tool. What we are producing. We are trying to create an experience, recreate an experience. So to to try to engage and to try to keep people uh, motivated. So that is something that. When we are looking at, for example, there is a game that is called Tintanic. Um, we are going to, uh, is a game that Golden Golden Growth uh, was uh, uh, experiencing, and we're going to see that this type of strategy that you have when you make the game, when you make, make the game uh, that is uh, very entertaining. I think. I want to contact the Titanic is a game on pinball. First of all, lots of video players contacted me right away and said, there is nothing like this in the market. At the beginning, where do we have? Where can I do it? This can be very interesting. My main idea was to offer all the players a free entry where they can put the game to test. They can identify those. And then you have a premium package where you have a great amount of new tools, uh, totally customized, and then the latest in the market, really speaking about payable in real life. Then the idea is a little to, to take to the virtual world, to the his sport. We are using a, a real sport to create a video game. <laughs> Not with FIFA, but something else. The idea of the market is to include different features, characteristics, where they, you earn money within the video game, not real money, but digital currency. And there you can go to loot box and with that same currency, you can purchase them. On the other hand, you can buy like cash premium. So you can buy another currency, like you call gold coins and demons in order to be able to place in the diamond. So you have like different types of currencies to be able to play. And today we were speaking with, I want to include as a parenthesis, it could be quite interesting, the whole idea of exclusivity for some, uh, for instance, in, in Navity Christmas 2023, that there will be specific times during the year to develop a different type of usability to that chain block. Then for this exclusivity, or for this exclusive block of information, to be able to use it only with this differentiated by chain blocks. But, and I guess, I, I think that I'm going to be researching far more about this. There is something that in summary for me with all what we have said, I want to really underscore, and it is especially that in this how we can uh, give, develop these games. This industry is one of the most, um, the one you can shape and reshape the best. It is fully engaged with the new tendencies in technology and not because they have the chain block, but it means that it, even there are lots of developers that uh, understand the, the differences among the different users that are looking for these, searching for these video games. Therefore, in this sense, I love the idea of promoting the industry because it presents a wide range of opportunities for all the tendencies and for all the interests, not only of the users, which is as a group, it is one niche, but also for the developers too. 
and that is why where you need to get the juice of this creative Latin America. I believe it is quite important, the whole idea of the flexibility of this industry to be able to adjust. They mentioned several times, and we were able to see that out of the professional environment, one of the main things is the video games because nobody is afraid. It is another function. And then the artificial intelligence is part of the developing, developing these games. For the last 20 years, we have been using it, not in the generative way that is being presented lately, but in the artificial intelligence, the algorithm, algorithms are not new for a developer. And they're being used for some time now, for a lot. And then there is cooperation with the films with entertainment. Video games are excellent. And I will say the best one to transmit narr narrative content. Instead of being speaking with somebody where all the content is, what happens if there will be a, this medium, but with where I can speak with a person as if I were speaking to a monitor. And I believe that we have that capability to recreate and to assume this technology and to say, let us do something and to show to the world what can be done. We are coming to the end of this panel, but I would like to finish with a very short round with the four. And those are two questions, and these are surprises for you. One, I would like for each of you to be able to make a recommendation. It doesn't matter whether it is an entrepreneur or if it is one from a, a service company that is listening to this or is working in the software industry for the last uh, 15 years. What will be the main recommendation that you would like to share, which is the practical way I think, uh, as practical as possible, what is the best recommendation that you would like to share with these persons in order to be able to enter in this industry? It doesn't matter whether you are finishing school or if you have been working 10, 15 years with software. You can start here. It is an excellent question in two forms. First, there is no excuse today to develop video games. There is a democratization process. Okay, I was doing something many years ago and I used to share it during break time in my school. I will recommend two things. One, to l you learn to link and there is no excuse to start. You don't even need money in order to start. And then perseverance perseverance continues to be something difficult. It is quite elusive. So you need to do very good fact, uh, fact finding, per absolute perseverance, and to start now to maintain it simple. We are facing here a er an era where technology is being updated constantly. It is coming up with new opportunities, and the biggest mistake of all those who enter into video games on the first time is to get too complicated with the dream of the developer and to become number one in the market, achieve number one in the market. What you need is to enter, to understand what is being done, what wants to be achieved, and to make it simple, to move into the market and grow into the market step by step, not only to pay attention to the mistakes, but then to learn how to avoid the mistakes that some of us committed when we started. Well, I believe that the importance is to mention that there are tools, free tools, that, that you can use to develop video games, and some of them are marvelous, that 15 years ago did not exist. So now it is easier. There are courses online, totally free, that help you to create these video games. So therefore, there is no excuse. There are also channels, forums, discs, 
where there are other developers that you can link up with in order to create teams to learn if you share your idea and they like it. Therefore, there are no limits. You can decide what will be your role. You want to be an artist, you want to be a developer, you want to be the producer, and you can then define what is the role that you want to play within these ranges, whether you are big, I mean, old, I started at 40, and uh, it is already considered to be old. Sometimes you have the, that type of concern. Okay, will this allow me to pay my bills, to enter in the studio to learn weekends? So it is just to find a way until I will say, well, let me abandon everything else and I'm going to dedicate full time to this if it is what you like. But something important is some people want to do video games because they like to play video games. No. Video games can be, could be stressing. <laughs> so you do video games because you want to create worlds, not only because you want to play. If you like to play, then just play. Gaston. You are the experience, and he is the product of all what you have said. He just has been watching video games for nine years. Uh, he said in some way what Juan has said on the recommendation to finish it closely and short. The best time to start video game would have been 20 years. And then the best time is next time is now. And we are going to just close with a message, but I want to share with you a message to all the persons that are watching the institutions to the investors. If you are not investing time and our money in the video games industry, you are not doing it correct. It is time to look at an industry that is so serious and so big and so promising that fintech like AI, like Vitris and all the industries in which you are participating. Just give it a look at opportunities of gamification for your business uh, transactions. Speak with the Latin American entities that are offering video game services and gamification. Or just speak with investors like us. There is a fund created since 2016.